Now, last night I took you inside a terrorist tunnel crossing from Lebanon into Israel, which was dug by Israel's enemy Hezbollah. And now news today that Israeli forces in their operation in the West Bank have just discovered in Janine, in a mosque, what they describe as an underground terrorist route. The IDF has now, in their words, neutralized the underground route. Meanwhile, our U.S. president appears to have a chilly relationship with Israel's prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu was reelected in November, but has yet to be invited to the White House. But he has received an invitation from China's president, Xi Jinping, and he has accepted. And then there is the report three weeks ago in the New York Times that has received little attention in the United States, but no doubt caught the attention of leaders here in Israel. It reads in part, quote, the Biden administration has been negotiating quietly with Iran to limit Tehran's nuclear program and free imprisoned Americans. And this news, if true, means the U.S. is negotiating with the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism and the country that wants to destroy Israel. The article goes on to report, quote, Iran would agree under a new pact, which two Israeli officials called imminent, not to enrich uranium beyond its current production level of 60 percent purity. That's close to, but short of the 90 percent purity needed to fashion a nuclear weapon. And also tonight, you will see the room where Jesus had his last supper. This is the record. Joining me is General Amir Avivi. Nice to see you, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Sir, um, obviously what's happened in Janine, the world has, has read about that, the, the, the IDF operation there. Uh, but we're now reading that uh, eight were injured in Tel Aviv car ramming. Someone rab, rammed, uh, rammed some people, got out, and stabbed, stabbed some people. Yeah, Hamas has taken responsibility of this attack. Uh, they say it's because of the operation in Jenin. But we know that uh, Hamas is dedicated to the destruction of the state of Israel. Uh, they are conducting a terror operations from Gaza in Judea and Samaria, uh, inside Israel. They're also uh, trying to get, uh, you know, Bedouins in the Negev and Israeli Arabs to join their efforts in uh, attacking Israeli citizens. So, I mean, how can you at this point protect the citizens? I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, it's very difficult. But you know, if, you know, Tel Aviv is quite a distance even from the West Bank. You know, it, it's it's a very long distance, and now I've got Hamas doing this. So you know, it's sad to see that uh, on one hand uh, we enabled for many Palestinians to come and work in Tel Aviv. Uh, in, in this incident, this terrorist is a guy, a Palestinian guy, that actually came from medical treatment. In Tel Aviv, we, we, we enabled him to come to Tel Aviv to get uh, medical uh, treatment, and his answer was a very vicious terror attack, hurting many people uh, with the car and then stabbing people. All right. I, the, the problems here in Israel are not unknown you know, to the world, um, and trying to come up with a creative solution has really been has bedeviled the world. Um, what uh, do you have any sort of creative idea? I know that you've been associated with something called a new solution or something to that. Yeah, um, we need out of the box thinking. I mean, we need to find a solution that on one hand, Israel can exist and prosper and be secure for generations to come. And Israel cannot exist, cannot be secure without the Jordan Valley and without Judea and Samaria, without massive presence of Jews in the land and uh, you know it's a really deep connection to this uh, area all our history is on these mountains but it's also a national security issue Israel cannot exist along a nine mile uh, length of shore and that's it we need space we need the mountains if you want to really live in Israel you need to sit on the mountains we have not done three, since uh, Bible times and on the other hand we want uh, to find a solution for the Palestinians. So there are many out-of-the-box solutions. One of them is, for example, the new state solution that actually anchors a Palestinian state in the Gaza Strip that today is actually pretty much a state, a terror state, but a state with the defined borders and the sea. If the U.S., if Europe will be aligned with a new idea, 
I think it will be much easier to also convince the Palestinians. General Vivi, but specifically, besides just the U.S. agreeing to something, what would you want the U.S. to actually do? What could, what could the U.S. actually do? Well, the U.S. Uh, needs to, first of all, recognize clearly what are Israel's national security needs for generations to come and not push ideas that basically push, push for the destruction of Israel. Calling for Israel to withdraw from the Jordan Valley and the mountains of Judea and Samaria is basically saying, you, the state of Israel, commit suicide. That, that's what you need to do. And this is something we cannot agree on. We need to, the U.S. to understand our needs. I think that the former administration did understand what are the national security needs, but we need all administrations to recognize that. General Miravivi, thank you very much, sir. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you very much.